Happy Friday. Welcome to Last Stop Penn Station. It's Ian Recabani and Carrie Silken. Carrie, you advised folks about the Super Bowl. I was Bowl. giving away money. <laughs> you said no one believes me. Whoever you bet, bet against. And uh, sure enough, it was uh, it was Tampa and the under. <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't been on a good run, but uh, Tara, I guess if you were a Tampa Tom Brady lover, it was a great game. Yeah, it ju- it felt like the Chiefs were lifeless. It just felt like they the receivers were dropping ball after ball. Mahomes, did you see the one he was parallel to the ground? He threw it and it hit the guy in the face mask. Yep, and he couldn't come up with it. Someone told me, or one of these sports center shows told me, that if you added up the yardage, not the sacked yardage, but the amount of yards that uh, Mahomes went going backwards, <laughs> it was close to 500 yards. Oh, my God. When he was scrambling all those times. Uh, and our, he was, he our was, producer, AJ, was nice enough to suffer through that game <laughs> with me. And, the, and it wouldn't have mattered in the end. But come on, those calls in the first half, yeah, those pass interference. Yeah, I, I mean, it was funny. There was a, a string of NFL players, including a couple of players from the Raiders that I'm, I'm blanking on the names, but a couple of the Raiders were tweeting back and forth about, hey, this is pass interference. I just wish the refs would have called it when we played them. This is how the Chiefs play. <laughs> so apparently the Chiefs are very aggressive. They're very handsy. Um you know, there's a couple that I thought weren't catchable, but at the same time, you can't put your hands on someone's throat no matter when. No well, matter there was also a couple you. that were very... Uh, Ticky-tacky? They didn't need to call it. I mean, yeah. it, when when the uh, the panel during the halftime show of Boomer Esiason mm-hmm. and Phil Sims, yeah. and I'm blanking out on the other names of these great legends... If they're saying which they did, there's yeah. questionable calls, <laughs> then but it wouldn't have mattered. Right. Right. I mean, everything the Buccaneers made almost no mistakes. That offensive lineman that could have had a, you know, a career highlight. He dropped the a touchdown, but they ran it in a couple of plays later with Fournette. So even when they did make mistakes, they just kicked the door down. And I know he hasn't had a very long career, but that was Patrick Mahone's statistically Worst game of his pro career by far. Right. And I I read a stat that said that was the only time he's ever lost by 10 or more points in high school or college. And that it was yep. the only time that he didn't score a touchdown. In, Which is crazy. Yeah. You think about it. Yeah. So those might be wrong or there might be some deviation of that that's close. But even if that's 90% accurate, that's amazing. Well... Congratulations, Tom Brady. Yeah. <laughs> give, give, give credit where it's due. Yeah. And um, that defense, too. Jason Pierre-Paul, who only has seven fingers or eight fingers, just <laughs> looked like a machine. And they wrote him off long ago, but he was in there getting to Mahomes, breaking through that line. It's crazy. And in retrospect, why? Oh, <laughs> why, why did I get involved? Like, like Silent Sydney would say, you yeah. know. The home, you know, the, the home dog. Right. Right. It was the home. The Tampa, at, they were at home. Mm-hmm. And you could tell from the crowd reaction. Right. Uh, it was like a home game. I mentioned uh, to AJ that this was the first Super Bowl ever where the, since the like, in other words, next year, it's going to be in L.A. Mm-hmm. So I believe it's where the Rams. The Rams and Chargers now. Yeah. Right. So one of the. Anyway, it was the first time the the team wound up being in their home stadium, mm-hmm. which is uh, so they had that advantage going for them. I was just thinking, you know, Mahomes is going to overcome Brady. The torch is going to be passed. But uh, yeah, maybe if you got a little help from his line and his receivers, <laughs> maybe that would happen. Yeah, just about everything that could have gone wrong. I won wrong. one bet. Oh, I don't, I don't make these prop bets. The but anthem? I have, I bet $100 on Brady throwing less than 280 yards. He only had, only, he only had 204 yards passing. Wow. Right? Yeah. So it wasn't that he was that great, Mm -hmm. but Tampa's defense was. Yeah. Tampa kept him off the board. And I think, like you said, I don't know that it mattered that there was the pass interference calls because the Chiefs just weren't scoring. I mean, they... 
the uh, Tampa defense held them pretty pretty solid. So, hey, what do you think about the halftime show? I liked all the songs. It felt like it didn't have energy though. It was weird. It I like his I like the weekend songs. It just felt kind of hollow. It felt I don't I don't think he's a great entertainer. Um, Michael Jackson, Prince, Prince, The Weeknd, uh, Bruno Mars. Bruno Mars right. killed it. He's hey, let, let's not forget uh, Shakira and J Lo. Yeah, I mean, they, yeah, they know how to move, right? <laughs> but they look they looked like they were into it. They looked like and. It, this just looked like it was kind of pre-recorded. It, I'd it was, said it was pre-recorded. I think it was too. Uh, yeah. Our producer disagrees, but uh, we're not yeah. sure. Fantastic production, of course. Sure. But um, he just it didn't. I, I guess I'm too old. No, because I my brother said that. My wife said that. Uh, I love the and that's the thing. I'm a fan. I like his. I like the music, but the performance didn't connect with me. Look, there was too many bells and whistles. It, it was like putting too many condiments on a sandwich that didn't have enough meat. I don't know. Like it's, I thought somehow you were going to play too many condoms. <laughs> <laughs> Only wear one. That's what I learned as a sex educator. <laughs> wearing two, the rubber wears down. Anyway, uh, we'll get to, that's a real thing, by the way, you can look that up. Um, so the, the game, yeah, the next night was the watch party, ROH watch party. That was way better. That was way better. <laughs> it's an hour. It's great. You get to see the best wrestlers in the world. We saw CB, Tracy Williams. Yeah, Cheeseburger, who I've known from day one, uh, really good to see him out there. Mm -hmm. uh, great, great promo that he did. Yeah. Tracy Williams, even though his stock is going up, he's, he's criminally underrated yeah in the in the world of pro wrestling but i as i think as this year rolls out uh do you know what i mean by that i think so i think tracy williams i think is going to break out this year i think he out of anybody in the ring of honor roster would be somebody that i i'd look forward to seeing for some competing for the championships but uh the Coming up next, though, we had that eight-man tag. What about Bestia and, and PCO? Bestia's Ring of Honor debut, nearing 50 years old. PCO, over 50. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about, like, two grizzly bears. And they were hitting the hell out of each other. <laughs> they, they were holding back nothing. What was that like live? Oh, God. It So calling that an empty arena, you hear everything echo and reverberate and... I swear there were two moments in that match that were the loudest things I've ever heard in an arena. One was Brody King chopping Flip Gordon early on in the match. And that one translated. If you go back and you watch it, that sounds like a, a shotgun was, was sent off. The other was the overhand from Bestia across the chest of PCO. And that sounded like somebody took two slabs of meat and just like, slammed them together on a hydraulic <laughs> pulley system. And it, would, it was nuts. What, what, the official ending was what? A, no, no contest. Contests. No contest. Yeah. So we'll look forward to uh, some, uh, there's a lot more action uh, there within those eight guys. Jeez. Yeah. And then, and then the foundation petitioned for next week to have six guys and a six man to show everybody what real wrestling looks like. So right. we'll see what, what that looks like, how that turns out. We had week by week this week for Ring of Honor, which featured Sledge and O'Shea Edwards, O'Shea's debut in Ring of Honor. So that was pretty cool. A lot of people waiting to see him. And talk about big men. Those two just be locking horns. It was a time limit draw. But I understand that there may be a rematch in the works. Okay. So we may see a rematch there. Coming up this week, the uh, the thing I know for sure is that we're going to be seeing the six-man tag, and uh, it's going to be featuring members of the Foundation, also Fred Yehai and Wheeler Yuta. Excellent. Well, this, this is, once again, it's Monday nights, 7 o'clock. If you don't get to see uh, Ring of Honor's weekly show on a Sinclair affiliate, you can watch it on uh, Monday. It stays on past it 7 o'clock. You can watch it. No charge. Mm -hmm. You should join Honor Club anyway. You should. <laughs> but uh, no charge. And you could interact with us on Twitter. It's a lot of fun. Big turnout this week. Maria is starting to hop in on the fun. Maria Canales, our friend. Uh, Mike Bennett, obviously, he's jumping in on the fun, too. And, uh, you know, Matt Taven, Beer City Bruiser, Brawler Malonis, Quinn McKay, Dak Draper, Dan Housen. There are, you know, you can talk with everybody and everybody's replying and responding to each other. It's a really great time. We trended again this week for the first time nice. in a bit. So 
You know, people are talking about Ring of Honor. They're getting excited about it. Dragon Lee, Roosh, and Bestia just re-upped and re-signed with Ring of Honor. So we won't have a... There was another re-signing or uh, two. Oh, you, Jonathan Gresham, Jay Lethal. Yeah. Um, I quietly did a few months ago. <laughs> so, <laughs> no fanfare for that one because we were in the pandemic, but I understand and that's okay. Well, I had the pleasure today to talk with Dave LaGreca. Mm-hmm. He had me on his show, I believe... By the time this is out, uh, it's on the podcast version of uh, Busted Open. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were talking about Ring of Honor and uh, how, you know, the action is just so good. And uh, people need to uh, we we don't want to look, we don't want to be like the redheaded stepchild. Right. You know, and I talked about, you know, uh, the intention was for us if everything wouldn't have went down like it did, the intention was for us to be on live. Mm-hmm. And hopefully we, that's still the plan. Yeah. And as, uh, as far as I know, that is the case. Although we, we are going to be certain to take the safety precautions and whatnot. Absolutely. Limit travel. But as soon as the vaccines, as soon as we reach that certain point where things start to open up officially, I, I think that is the plan. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's a great roster. Yeah. Um, I was just going over the names with him mm-hmm. and, uh, it lines up with anybody. So uh, check out the Ring of Honor show. Join Honor Club. There's a wealth of great wrestling going back almost 20 years. Amazing. 